today's title of the video this is girl talk episode one and so i'm going to introduce what girl talk is because it's not only for girls it's for everyone so i'm going to introduce girl talk to y'all so y'all can get the a clear understanding and then i'm gonna hop straight into the topic that i was given so girl talk is by me ivana marie and i'm going to read to y'all what it really is so hello welcome to girl talk in this series of talks we will talk about the struggle challenges and insecurities we face as we soar in the kingdom and so much more i know many feel like they do not have a safe place to express themselves but i'm here to let you know that you can do that right here girl no judgments and no condemnations be free to express yourself here and don't be afraid to share your struggles temptations and insecurities you never know who you are helping by your testimonies so come and join me all all, all okay y'all all caps all are welcomed okay and if you want to connect with me personally you can text my email at ivana well not at ivana cannon but ivana cannon 22 at gmail.com and i'll put all that in the description so if you forget everything i said this far it will be in the description so let's go ahead and get to the topic of this video and the topic of this video is friends of convenience this is what the topic that i was given on last night like the way god was just throwing it out i was like lord now come on so i'm gonna hop straight into it and i hope y'all enjoy this video okay y'all so last night i was reading my word and stuff like that and i was reading john 10 and you know i was reading john um one through like i think it was like 23 where it talks about him being the good shepherd and you know it goes all the way down to the end talking about how him and the father are one and that nobody can snatch us from his hands yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know what it is but anyway <laughs> yeah so i was reading that and as i was reading john 10 11 through 13 really stood out to me and you know every time i read it every time i read a verse i always be like god give me more understanding help me not to see it how i saw it the last time help me to see something even more because when we read something we don't want to just read it how we read it before we want to like lord give me some more knowledge on this because i know there's more to this there's always more to his word we just have to be willing to seek it out so i read john um 10 through 11 through 13 i'm about to read this to y'all so starting on verse 11 it says i am the good shepherd who lays down my life as a sacrifice for the sheep but the worker who serves only for wages is not a real shepherd because he has no heart for the sheep. He will run away and abandon them when he sees the wolf coming. Y'all take note of all this. And when the wolf mauls the sheep, drags them off and scatters them. Well, then the, you know, the wolf mauls the sheep and then scatters them. So, yes. And that's the verse, right? And so I was just thinking like, okay, the same way that the hired hand does not really take care of the sheep, the hired hand is just, they're just working for the benefits. They don't want no personal relationship with the sheep. They're just there to be there. But if, if the wolf came, they would abandon the sheep. You know why? Because they don't really care. They just really care about the money. They really care about the wages. And when I thought about that, I thought about relationships and friendships i thought about that and i don't know why like i was not trying to like think like that but that just popped up in my spirit i was just like wow like this could really be related to friends of convenience and so guys if you don't know what friends of convenience is it's basically friends that you have they you notice that they only hit you up when they need something they never really want to do nothing for you they never do nothing out the kindness of their heart they always putting stuff back on you like oh i did this for you you know like just think about the people that you're connected to and just think about how they they do it because you're convenient because you're close you're nearby but if you was to ask for the same in return they wouldn't do it for you now i'm not telling you to drop them i'm just saying watch watch who you hang around so going into this friends of convenience y'all and don't mind the background these are the notes i wrote down so they're not really here for you they're here for what they can get from you and when i thought about the higher hand i was thinking because remember in verse 12 it says but the worker only serves for the wages it's not a real shepherd so i'm not really here to be your friend i'm not here to commune with you i'm not here to worship at the house of god with you i'm not really here for that even though it looked like i'm coming like that and remember that the wolf it comes in sheep clothing you know sometimes it can come in sheep clothing so i'm not really here to praise god with you i'm not really here to build a relationship with you i'm not really here to get to know you i'm not really here to really find out who you are 
I'm here so I can get something from you. I'm only going through the process so I can take advantage of you. Okay? That's what they're thinking in their mind. They're not really here for you. They're here for what they can get from you. They're only there for what they can get from you. And so I just want y'all, you know, to just think about, you know, everybody you ever came in contact with. Like, hmm, like, you know, they just always call me when it's convenient. They only call me when they need something. But every time I need something, they never available. Like, you know, keep track of those things. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying drop them. But, you know, we don't want to be, like, taken advantage of. Like, you don't want to be used and used. But that stuff can drain you out. So, really pay attention to that, okay? And then the next note I made was, they are only there for you in your good times. And in parentheses, I put wages. Because remember, the worker who only serves for wages is not a real shepherd. That's the hired hand. They're only there for you in your good times. They're only there when you're in your happy times, when you're in your triumph times, when you have the victory, when you're up. They're only there for you when you're getting blessings. But when you are in your worst time, and you get you get blessed in your worst time, so don't, don't misquote me on that. But when you are in your worst of times, and in parentheses, I put the wolf coming. They are nowhere to be found. Notice how it says in verse 12 through 13, it says, Because he has no heart for the sheep, he will run away and abandon them when he sees the wolf coming. Your friends will up and you leave you. Sometimes even family will up and leave you when you're in your bad times. But that's when you need them the most. You need them to stick beside you. He only he only came when you was good, when you had the wages, when you had the money. They was good with you when you were in your good times, when you was getting blessed, right? But now that you're down bad, now that you're struggling, now that you're going through something, guess what? They're going to abandon you. Why? Because they see that you're going through things. They don't want to be with you in your bad times. They don't want to be with you in your struggles. They don't want to be with you in none of that. They want to be with you when you up, when you got it all together. But they never want to go through the hard process with you. They always forsake you when you go through the hard process so take note of that they are only there for you in your good times they're only there for you when they got when the money's coming but when you are in your worst of times when the wolf is coming they are nowhere to be found and the wolf coming represents the trial the temptation your struggles when all that comes they're nowhere to be found you can't ask them for no prayer or nothing why because what they're nowhere to be found you can't rely on them for nothing they're not covering you none of that so take note of that. The next note I made is they have a mindset of as long as I benefit off of you, I'm fine. So think about that. The higher hand is only watching the sheep for what? The money, the benefits of it. He's not really watching it because he cares about the sheep. So they have a mindset of as long as I ben benefit off of you, I'm fine. I'm good. So you really have to pay attention. Like, Notice the people who always leech on you. Like, okay, well, I'm going to wait till you get blessed and I'm going to wait till your work done. And then, like, you know, you give me some of yours. No, we both got to do this work together. So just really take note of that. That as long as I benefit off of you, I'm fine. You know, think about that. Like, think about those people that always just leech on you. You feel like you're carrying them too. And they're not putting in no type of effort, no work. So just keep that in mind. And then the other one I put is, well, this is not mine, but this is something I referenced off another page. And so it says here, Jesus refers to those who serve the flock in a sense, but who are not actually motivated by love and self-sacrifice. A hired sheep, for instance, is inclined to run away when the sheep are under severe threat. When you are on, when you are in threat, when you're going through things, temptations, oh, they run away. They're nowhere to be found. A hired shepherd, for instance, is inclined to run away when the sheep are under severe threat. That hired hand is only interested in the sheep so as long as he benefits. As long as the hired hand benefits, they're okay, right? And then it says, when serving the sheep, when serving the sheep means personal risk, he takes, he abandons them. He, he, he leaves. Why? When it means I have to sacrifice myself, oh, I'm done. It says this describes those who purposefully take advantage of others using spiritual deception. But it also applies to those who passively take advantage by claiming spiritual authority or privilege without the service or sacrifice that the position entails. So... Just think about it. Think about all these people who want to be preachers, um, bishops and all these things, right? But they're not even doing the work. They they want to claim these little big high authorities, but they're not even seeking God. They're not 
putting on, they're not sacrificing themselves as a living sacrifice. They're not doing any of that, right? We're not judging it. We're just saying, like, they try to put on these big old titles, like, I'm a preacher, I'm a bishop, I'm an evangelist, but you're not even doing the work. Because it says right here that, but it also applies to those who passively take advantage by claiming spiritual authority or privilege without even service or sacrifice. You don't do no service. You don't, you don't give your body as a living sacrifice. You're not willing to do none of that none of it and so don't call yourself this person or god called me and god called me when you're not even doing the service you know when a person is called by god and you know when a man is called by man so just look just look out for that just ask god for spiritual discernment on those things but that was the topic of today y'all i honestly want y'all to really take a look at your friend group this even applies to me i'm not just gonna preach to y'all and not apply it to my life because i'm not gonna get on here and be no hypocrite because if that's the case then i don't need to be um in this front camera but i just want to let y'all know that don't let nobody take advantage of y'all notice those people who always leech on you notice those people that you always pouring into but they never pour back and it's they always have an excuse you know what i'm saying they always have an excuse to why they're not pouring back they always have an excuse to why they can't show up for you why they can't pray for you why they can't do this for you right now one thing about life is we're gonna always be busy but you are gonna make time for the things that you love and if they really love you they're gonna make time for you no matter what guess what i i let me tell y'all about my schedule okay y'all i go to school in the morning right and then after that i go to school for like what like school is like eight hours straight because it's like eight to three thirty right after that guess what i have a three hour practice three hour band practice i don't get home till like seven sometimes even seven thirty sometimes eight o'clock but guess what i still make time to open my word and still commune with god even talk to him i still make time for god so this is what i mean by you gonna make time for the things that you love in this life we're gonna always be busy in this life sometimes we may be tired but let me tell you something, whether you laying on your bed, washing in that shower, taking a sit down, drinking, eating food, baby, you better commune with your Savior. You better talk with your Savior. You better thank your Savior today because if it wasn't for your Savior, you would not be here. And it's the same thing when it comes to having friends. If your friends love you, they're going to make time for you. Point blank, period. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Okay? You're going to make time for the things that you love, okay? We're going to always be busy. Sometimes we're going to be tired. But at the end of the day, don't ever get to that point where you're selfish. You can only think about yourself. And, I, and I'm going through this, so I can't worry about nobody else. Don't get to that mindset. I was just hearing that in church the other day. Do not get to that mindset where you feel like you cannot help nobody else, no one else. So I just wanted to tell y'all that and i hope this really encourage y'all to just keep pressing keep going forward stop allowing the enemy to discourage you watch the things let me tell you something our desires they can be good desires but if we desire it more than god it can end up being bad you know why because the enemy will he the enemy knows our desires just like god knows our desires the enemy will send counterfeits the enemy will send those friends that you think are sheep, but they're not really sheep. They're really wolves in sheep clothing. And so this is what the whole topic was about. Friends of convenience. You should not be somebody's convenience. Don't stay in a relationship because it's convenient for them. Oh, I don't want to. No, 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 no. You are not a convenience, baby. If somebody comes into your life, baby, that's a covenant, okay? That's a covenant. We want covenant-keeping relationships and friendships. We want covenant-keeping we covenant keeping bonds like i'm gonna be there for you i'm not going to leave you we want that we don't want convenient relationships convenient friendships you only need me such no we don't need that if you're not coming for covenant we don't want it so i just hope this video um encourage y'all hope it you know open your eyes up to some things maybe god might you know show you some things some people around you that just using you don't even know it i know god gonna reveal to me some things i know he is um, he's even doing it now. So I just pray y'all take this advice because I know I got to take it for myself. And I hope this video encouraged y'all. And y'all already know my saying. <laughs> love God, love others and baby. Don't forget to like yourself. Y'all have a blessed day. I love y'all. And I love y'all. And I will see y'all in my next video.